you blow up a huge number of cast members in a single moment, you don't want it to be completely random. You know, it feels like it's got to be earned and, and it feels like it's got to be something that belongs to the world. At this point in the story, we try to introduce as few new elements as possible. You're trying to play with the pieces that we've got on the board and of realizing that the wildfire was something that we had. Going back to earlier seasons and, and going back to the books, we've known for quite some time that the Mad King had planted caches of, of wildfire throughout the city. And when Jamie is telling Brienne the story of the last moments of the Mad King, he tells her that the wildfire was planted below major boulevards, and he actually says, below the Sept of Baylor. I just couldn't have seen all of that. You know, I knew there was revenge to be had, obviously, from last year, but I just, I was, I'm still like, this is crazy. I got a phone call from Dan and David, and they said, um, uh, hey, dude, and that was enough. I knew right then and there. It's like a slow burn. You basically start the sequence with a whole different bunch of people with a whole different bunch of expectations as they get ready for work one day, and they go to work, and then work becomes something completely different. Each one of the images was very carefully designed to flow into the next image that followed it. It was such a powerful way into this scenario, one that really shies away from giving away what's going to happen. Marjorie's carved a career out of being occasionally one step ahead and occasionally one step behind Cersei. There's something wrong. And the two ladies have battled quite evenly for this time. And what we obviously find out is that Marjorie's demise in being beaten was not her fault. It's down to the High Sparrow underestimating Cersei. You have nothing to fear, Your Grace. The trial will begin shortly. He's just become overconfident. His, what he's doing is, is in the forefront of his mind. And he doesn't really suspect that anyone's going to undermine him. <laughs> the ultimate dramatic moment in that sequence is when Marjorie turns to the High Sparrow. You end on a big close-up of Jonathan Price's face, who is so expressive and can say so many things with so little. And you can see, just the second before the whole place blows up, that he goes, oh, shit. <laughs> we have yet another awesome scene in the set filled with extras in a very grandiose, a ceremonial situation. And for once, I'm not getting married. <laughs> Let me through. Let me through. We filled the set with 287 extras and a light source and these big kind of things, uh, air movers, they're called, that kind of do these gusts of air. And we would do a time and we'd go, three, two, one. Go! and then everybody fell back. So that was as close to exploding as we got, but a majority of it, 99% of it, will all be visual effects. We get storyboards from the director, and then we go into uh, previs, and uh, we uh, work out uh, cameras and animations. Then we have a, a good animatic version of, of that final shot, so we know first how to shoot it and be what it's gonna look like. Obviously, it looks like a video game, but we know what we're going for and how we want it to uh, look at the end of the day. We see it from the inside. When we come outside, we see uh, the windows get, getting blown out. And then we see it, of course, from Cersei's and Tommen's POV. It needed many iterations in Previs to get the beats of it right, so that Dan and David felt like it was emotional enough, it was big, but also it didn't get so big that we lost our main characters in it. We don't have an exterior sept. It's always been a combination of found locations and CGI. So we knew that the exterior of blowing up the set would be something that would have to be completely generated by visual effects. We knew, however, we would want some elements. Action! It's lit underneath. We made, we made lighting trays underneath that had a UV LED strip system. And then the puddle itself is a high fluorescent pigment. When you're lighting from underneath, it's glowing already. Then we've lighted from above as well, and you've got the additional, and that's what gives it that real high fluorescence. It's like this pure enjoyment of wiping out all of them. She has a plan. She executes that plan flawlessly, apart from one major wrinkle. the very person that she wanted to protect most in the world 
is lost as a direct result of her actions. Show me. What we were trying to do in the scene is to show that something dying inside her. The prophecy has come true. She's seen all of her children die. The thing that kept her going for so long is gone. She's been through so much and she's so hardened that she's not even capable of mourning him. The next step is that she's going to take that throne. Now you have this woman who, I don't know if it's crazed, I think it's just empty, which is probably more dangerous. She finally gets her heart's desire, the Iron Throne. At the same time, she's lost almost everything that she cared about to get it. And there's that look between her and Jamie, which is enigmatic, and which hints that season seven drama to unfold. But she is, at the end of season six, colder and stronger and Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Long may she reign. Long may she reign. It's tough, you know, it's like the Red Wedding. It's, it's tough to say goodbye to a lot of actors that we've been working with for quite some time. Whether the ones that we've, we've been with since season two or, you know, John Lynn Price who just came to us last year but has become one of our favorite actors so quickly. I hope it's not a waste that I've learned all 500 names of everybody I've worked with. It is a great, great production to be involved in. I won't be able to say thank you to all of you, but I've had a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Come on, it's been very personal. Which of the best ones are, I think. So I'll miss Lancel. I'll miss him a lot. Once you've been a part of the circus and the madness and the joy that is Thrones, you are always a member of the family. The rose has been uprooted.